Hi and welcome to this week's project. In this week's project we are going to be doing some double die stabilising. In the next part there's going to be a, a little video which will be slightly speeded up um, showing me doing the process of um, dipping the blanks and putting them into an oven. Um, this is the Cactus Juice Stabilising Resin Chamber by Turntex and um, House of Resin kindly lent me this uh, just to test out and um, today is going to be the first time that I try it. So the first ex Im impressions of this uh, chamber are just uh, how amazingly well it's built for starters and the design is so well done. I have um, obviously a vacuum chamber, um, a different one. I actually wanted one of these right at the beginning but at the time you could only get them in America and I just couldn't afford to get the postage on it to get it into the country. So uh, House of Resin now stock these um, in several different sizes. Um, this is just happens to be one of them. I think this is 4 by 4 inch by 16. and. Um, the advantage of having this one is having a clear tube on it so that you can actually see the bubbles rising and you'll be able to better see how the blanks are doing during stabilisation. Uh, this part on here is so incredibly well made, it is really solid, I was quite surprised at how well it's made and I'm not going to upturn it because the release the pins out but it's got a lovely um, seal on the back there and um, yeah so we're going to test this unit out today and I think it'll do surprisingly well it comes with one of these locking lids on it so um, the tubes are never truly round so these are designed to go down and they'll, and they'll push you into place to hold your blanks down at the bottom and then um, you fill your chamber with resin at roughly about an inch, inch above it I'm going to be adding colour into this one today and it is going to be blue that I'm going to be pouring into here. I might have to add a little bit maybe of resin to it uh, just to make sure that we've got it above the inch but this will then go on to vacuum and I will basically it will be vacuuming until the bubbles stop coming out. Uh, I'm suspecting possibly uh, a few hours that that will happen. But anyway, this is what I'm going to be using today. Also, with this chamber, you get a locking bottom. Let me take that off. And this actually just slots out. So you can screw this into any board. I just screwed it into a couple of pieces of MDF. And then you just sit your chamber in and twist it. And it actually stops it from tipping over, which is such a, it's a, such a great idea. Because otherwise, you'd have maybe had to have made something to hold it because with the the height on these that they'd be likely to get knocked over so anyway if you want one of these you'll be able to get them at house of resin and uh yeah i'm going to go through the process of uh the double die and then we will show fully stabilize the blanks in here Snowflakes are coming down Collapse into water when they hit the ground I hear the sound of empty streets Yesterday has gone to sleep So all that's left is you and me I can promise you're the only thing I see Running out 
of sight A lonely wind is passing by Tries to carry all the whispers that it finds The walls are listening when we talk Making echoes as we walk Okay, so the next day and the blanks have been double dipped, placed in the oven and just sanded down to make sure any crusts from the resin is off them. What I'm actually going to do now is get them into this chamber which you should just slot them in. So what we should do here now is I'm going to actually pour the resin, oh no I'm not, I'm going to lock it down. So this little bit here um, slides in down to the, the bottom there, so we'll stop those bits floating up now and then I should get the resin in. These chambers, when you change, uh, when you empty out all the resin and that, they can just be washed with soap and water. Now we're aiming for roughly about an inch above the blanks, which is an inch above the bottom of there. So I'm just going to do that. So. Right, so connect this on to here. It's uh, a quick release one which is just brilliant really. Right, so that's all in there correctly. Now when I plug this in it is going to be incredibly annoying. By the way, these come with a great um, booklet as well and it actually tells you about um, the double die technique in here and you know about stabilizing and all of that it's a great little manual okay this is a bit noisy now so uh, the air is currently um, back and just all through so I have to turn it on I've got this out and I've equalized it so just start drawing some vacuum Now keeping an eye on this, you can see it's pulling bubbles already. So we just want to keep an eye out because if I pull that too quickly into full vacuum, it'll just basically go up here and straight into my pump. See it's rising there, so we need to keep an eye we don't go up too quickly. That's it just pulling the air out and it just all the air in that resin just makes it rise. We're still nowhere near at full vacuum at this point yet. This chamber is absolutely brilliant to be honest. What um, pull it has on it. Okay, that's us at full vacuum. It's slightly below actually on my dial but I'm needing to change the oil in the vacuum pump. But it's certainly doing its job so this will be it for a few hours i shall come back at the end once i've finished vacuum okay it's the next day now and i'm out in the shed ready for um the stabilizing part while they're getting into the oven that ticking noise is this oven so uh, i know that i've been caught out with that a couple of times on video so just to let you know it's just the oven it's the timer actually ticking so it took about six hours yesterday um, for all the bubbles to disappear 
and I don't know if you can see that well there but it's actually at the the top that holds it down there so it's sucked up a fair amount of the resin it's, it's sucked up a good inch and a half out of there really so it was six hours and then it's been about 15 17 hours since then I left it overnight to soak so they say they say like double the time it took to stabilize so it took uh, 12 hours um, it took six hours so 12 hours they're saying now we're going to get these out and gonna dry them I shall probably fast forward this bit so that you don't have so much waiting around now the idea with this um, chamber is that you can that should lock in place still <coughs> and give you time to pour the resin out I use one of these little ones here and just uh, just make sure I've got your camera yeah and um, pour it all out so anyway I'm going to do that and then get the bits out and onto here So that's them um, all out. They look quite dark in colour at the minute, but I don't think we're going to really see until I'm seeing other colours in there. So I think it'll be a case of look, we'll get it in the oven and then we'll be able to sand them back and really have a look then. Um, I'm possibly going to try something else if this doesn't come out quite as I hope it does. I always rub the excess resin off and I don't wrap anything in tin foil. it's just the way I work. Um, I put it straight onto the shelf and I have a drip tray that catches anything. Okay, that's all the blank sanded and um, just cleaned up and I just put a coat of varnish on them so that we can see them they're quite interesting the, the colours the way the colours have come out of it you can still clearly see the the green and the orange on that with the blue streak up I went and turned one on the lathe just so that we could have a look to see what's on the inside of it so you can clearly see the orange here and the green and even though these were just dipped in a pot and weren't vacuumed they've gone all the way through so um, there's the blue green's quite quite thick in on there it gives a really interesting look I mean this this particular blank I don't think would be because uh, of that big knot wouldn't have been that good for a a pen blank but it you know I'm sure uh, those could have been filled with CA so that was just a double dye in I think the next one that I want to try it out on is a bit of burr um, I'd ideally like a lighter wood burr so I'm going to check out the shed and that will be the next project we're going to just keep testing this and see how we get on I think the next time I would have maybe done a lighter colour as the last one and kept the stronger colours for the dipping in the in the dish so anyway just a tester out not the best pieces of wood to try it on but um, quite a funky effect that it's given me I'll pop up some photos and thanks very much for watching